Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles. And this article just came out a few hours ago. Comey hid Clinton emails, binder in his office safe, and had Hillary's backup email device. This is by Patrick Howley, and this is, you know, big league politics. Yeah, the former FBI director James Comey had a white binder marked Clinton emails in his office on May 16, 2017, a few days after he was fired, as the Department of Justice was trying to get back the items in Comey's office safe. The State Department and FBI also possessed a Datto backup email device for Hillary Clinton's private email server, which a judge ordered released. Michael Bakisha, who waged the Datto case for Judicial Watch, tells Big League Politics that the State Department is still processing the FBI investigative file, even though Datto contents were ordered released by last September. Bakisha said that it is possible that the State Department has not searched the device, which they received from Comey's FBI, noting they have not yet identified the location of all the records that they reviewed and produced. Comey got busted by the FBI for hiding his Clinton emails binder after he got fired from the FBI, as Big League Politics exclusively reported. And if you go down here, you can look at this as a document. Now, I saw this document shortly after it released. And if we look at item inventory item number 17, there were actually several documents that were put out. It says one of two, but there were several that listed receipt for property from Comey. So uh, this one, like I said, if you look down to number 17, interesting number, right? Number 17, white binder, Clinton emails, and see the top secret here was marked out. And I don't know what the X's at the end are for. So probably marking out something they didn't want the rest of us to see, or maybe, you know, I don't know, um, something that was another code or something. But anyway, so yeah, white binder, Clinton emails. So Comey had this. And, you know, there's different things that were included in this. I also think it's kind of interesting, China travel prep book up there. But yeah, there were several documents that, came up in that batch and I think it was probably a year ago that those came out and I have copies of them and I've looked through them and I did see that at the time but there wasn't much more I could put onto it at the time but now you know Judicial Watch has been doing some great stuff and so yeah they've been working on this and this was the thing uh, the document does not show what medium was used to store the emails within the binder. The binder could have had sleeved pages for CDs, which could have had Clinton's email to include the missing emails that were bleach bit wiped by Paul Combetta while the server was under a subpoena order from Congress to preserve. Uh, you know, it's just very interesting. So let's go down to this. This was part of the FBI report that was put out, and you'll see here that it has these different paragraphs, and um, this comment, I don't know who this comment comes from, okay? And they say, I don't know if this was intentional. These two top paragraphs are out of order in, in the level of importance. The second paragraph should be at the top of the page. We read in the second paragraph that Hillary Clinton's emails, which include top secret intelligence, were uploaded to Datto's cloud. The way I read these two paragraphs, I see the work of spycraft. Unencrypted top secret intelligence in a cloud, what could go wrong? Credible sources have said that these breaches caused the death of both CIA and Mossad assets. Whoever this redacted person is stated the Clintons originally requested that email on the PRN, and that's that Platte River Networks, so when you see PRN, that's what it is, server be encrypted such that no one but the users could read the content. However, PRN ultimately did not configure the email settings this way to allow system administrators to troubleshoot problems occurring within user accounts. And then if you go back up to the top, as part of the PRN server environment, this person told the FBI that he configured a backup device from Connecticut-based company Datto, Inc., Datto, a Datto Cirrus 2000, to make multiple snapshots of the server system daily with a retention period of 60 days. The backup device also made multiple copies of the Pagliano server between June 24, 2013 and December 23, 2013. At the Clinton's request, PRN only intended that the backup device store local copies of the backups. 
However, in August 2015, Datto informed PRN that due to a technical oversight, the PRN server was also backing up the server to Datto's secure cloud storage. After this notification, PRN instructed Datto to discontinue the secure cloud backups. So, sounds like, yeah, there's some information on this Datto server, but we haven't heard people talking about this very much. This writer reported here, uh, this was April of 2018, Hillary's deleted emails have been found, court orders them released, and they were supposed to be released by like September 28th or the end of September. And yeah, so I tried finding on the Judicial Watch site, I tried finding more information about the status of things, and I really couldn't find it. So... I don't know the update of how that particular suit is going. It turns out that the fired FBI director, James Comey, had Hillary Clinton's definitive backup email device the entire election and never searched it. And then it goes on. Thanks to the work citizen researcher Larry Kawa, the coverage of big league politics, the determined congressional work of Representative Ron DeSantis, and the lawyers of Tom Fitton's Judicial Watch, a court ruling from U.S. District Court Judge Randolph Moss orders the State Department to hand over the contents of the backup device by September 2018, right before the midterm elections. But again, this is kind of odd here because this talks as if it's still in the future when now it's not. It, yes, it says this article was written on 2019, so... I'm not sure that kind of puzzled me when I read that. And we still don't know the disposition of those. I don't think they've all come out yet, but some of them have. I know that. Big League Politics exclusively learned that Hillary Clinton's email storage company, Platte River Networks, subcontracted to a company in Connecticut called Datto, which backed up the vast majority of Clinton's deleted emails, text messages, and other electronic communications. Datto handed six disks containing information to the FBI in October 2015. One of those disks contains at least a great many of her missing emails. Comey turned the disks over to the State Department, which has been compelled to search them and release the contents. We don't know what the FBI did once they had the device and information on it. What we know is since the investigation ended in July of last year, the material found on that device has been forwarded from the Justice Department to the State Department. Michael Bakisha, Justice Watch senior lawyer working on the case, told Big League Politics in an exclusive interview. And then they put this in here. Representative Ron DeSantis, of course, this was back in 2017, grilled FBI Director Christopher Wray about the Datto device in a hearing, marking the only time a lawmaker has mentioned the device on the record. Wray dodged the question about why the FBI never searched the device. DeSantis is now leading the charge to hold Obama administration officials legally accountable for their actions during and after the 2016 election. Well, now, you know, DeSantis is now the governor of Florida, and so he's no longer representative, so he can't be you know, leading the battle charge in Congress right now. He's still working on and trying to get Congress to bring this to light. But of course, you know, everything has changed since the Republicans no longer have the House. So, you know, the focus has no longer been on actually finding the truth out about things. It's more on trying to find something possibly that they can use to get rid of Trump. You know, that's what the situation is now. So, uh, but I wanted to play this clip for you because I think he asked some very good questions and it's interesting to see how Christopher Ray deals with this because I don't think he's being above board on this and he does seem to sidestep the question. And so anyway, let me play it for you and then we'll come back and talk about it. Uh, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. DeSantis, is now recognized for five minutes. Welcome, Director. Um, Secretary Clinton's emails were backed up on a cloud uh, by Datto, Inc., and they're now subject to an order by U.S. District Judge Moss in a case brought by D Judicial Watch. My question is, why did the FBI not search the data, Datto device in its possession for Hillary's deleted emails? I believe decisions made in the course of the Clinton email investigation are all the subject of the well, Inspector General's review. Why do you know why the, review. FBI, the FBI didn't disclose that such device was in its possession? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Was Attorney General Lynch's airplane cabin monitored when she met with Bill Clinton on 27 June 2016 on the tarmac in Phoenix? 
Uh, I don't know the answer to that, and I think that the tarmac meeting, I think, is part of or related to the Inspector General's outside and independent investigation. You know how the meeting came about, though? It's not like you just bumped someone in a shopping mall. They met on a, pri a private plane or plane. Do you, do you have any in insight into that? I, I wouldn't say that I have any constructive insight to offer to that. I've read some of the same newspaper coverage that you have. Uh, but as I said, that's, that whole episode is wrapped up in the Inspector General's ongoing investigation. How did the Russia investigation start? Did, did Peter Stroke, was he, did he start it? I'm not aware of who started the investigation was within the FBI. Was it started because the dossier was presented to somebody in the FBI? I don't have the answer to that question. Okay, can you get the answer to that question for us? Well, if there's information that we can provide that without compromising uh, the ongoing special counsel investigation, I'm happy to see what there is that we can do to be responsive. Was Peter Strzok involved in coming up with the conclusion that the FBI reached about Russia, whatever involvement they had when they issued a report after the election? Uh, that's a question that goes right to the heart of the special counsel investigation, and I, I don't think it would be appropriate for me to speculate or comment on that. So here's, the, I think, the problem that, that, that you have. I think you're walking into a contempt of Congress. I mean, the idea that we can't conduct oversight over how the FBI is handling things that are very sensitive, um, and then you're going to come to us and say we should reauthorize all these programs willy-nilly, I just think you're wrong on that. Um, and I, I, I don't think you're trying. I just, I don't know what advice you've got, but we do have a right to conduct oversight over this. We all can deal with classified information all the time. So we have a question about how this dossier was generated for political purposes. It ended up in the FBI's possession. What did the FBI do with it? And your answer to us is you will not give us any information on that today. My answer has a couple parts to it. There are certain of the various questions that have been asked here today. There are some topics that I think it's not appropriate to discuss in open forum. There are some topics that are but classified. Not, whether you use it or not, though, is not classified. Go ahead. What? There are some topics where, even though the information is classified, we can and do and will share it with the committees in an appropriate setting. And then there are some topics that go straight to, even though it's not just a question of classification, that go straight to access to sensitive sources and methods which is something that all of us as Americans have to take very, very but seriously. The chairman of the Intelligence Committee has a right to that, and you still you won't even produce it to the chairman of the Intelligence Committee. So here's the problem. Whether Stroke was involved in this, that needs to be disclosed to Congress. Whether the dossier was used to generate surveillance with a FISA court on a Trump associate, that needs to be disclosed to Congress. I don't care about the sources and methods. Beyond. We know where the, the sources and methods. It was the Democratic Party paying Fusion GPS to get the, the dossier. So we know that. The question is, how did your organization use it? You weren't there during that time, but if they were getting this information from a political party and then using it for surveillance against an opposition party candidate, that's a problem. Do you agree that that would be a problem for the American people? I, I do agree, Congressman, that any inappropriate use of the FISA process uh, for political purposes uh, is something that we should all be very concerned about and take very seriously. So we, we need the answers to that. It's very, very important. Let me ask you this. Um, independence from politics, I agree, but the FBI, like all agencies, need to be accountable to someone. So let me ask you this. Would it have been inappropriate if President Kennedy ordered Director Hoover to stop surveilling Martin Luther King Jr. in, say, 1962, if he believed that surveillance was illegitimate? No. Right. So, so, so you would be accountable. Is it customary to draft an exoneration memo long before interviewing all well relevant witnesses, including the target of that investigation? Well, I, I do believe that in any investigation, final decisions and conclusions should wait until, as Congressman Gowdy said, until the, you know, until the last witness uh, has been reached. On the other hand, I also know from having done investigations both for the government and in the private side that as the investigation develops, you start forming views about what you're finding, all subject to revision and in some cases uh, withdrawal until you're done. Fair enough. Is it acceptable practice for FBI agents to leak official work product to the media? No. Thank you. I yield back. So I really like what DeSantis did there, you know, that he was asking 
not only about this, he also asked about the tarmac and he also put in that little question about Kennedy, you know, because what he did with that question was take it out of the emotionally charged, you know, partisan thing that's going on right now with anti-Trump type stuff that's going on and put it back on the Democrats because, you know, JFK was a Democrat. So this brought it back into a different perspective. Did he have the authority to do it? Well, if he would have had the authority to do that, then why can't Trump have the authority? You see, they're really having this different standard. And I think that's what he was trying to portray there. So he did a really good job. Again, he's no longer in the fight right now. And unfortunately, but there are others who are stepping up and are really taking things on. And I know this is a blast from the past, but remember, a lot of these things were coming out a year to two years ago. I mean, this was December of 2017 when this came out, and yet people don't know about it. Why do people not really understand that there was this backup? And where is it? And why don't we have it? And about the tarmac, there was a recording. Why do we not have that recording? That's an important thing. So anyway, it goes on and says, um, you know, here's a commercial. If you want to watch this commercial, I'm not going to play it because I really am trying to be careful about not, you know, stepping on anybody's content. And I don't know these people and I don't know what they would do. When it comes to C-SPAN, I can use it as long as I'm doing commentary on it. That's fair use. And with uh, Fox News, they're very good at allowing us to do commentary on theirs, too. So those I'm not too worried about. But some of the other sources, if you use just a little bit too much, then they put you in this copyright claim situation where you're kind of in limbo with that particular video. And I'm trying to steer clear of that. So it's not that big a deal. All it is, this particular commercial just shows that if there's disasters that happen, this Datto device is going to save you because it will have all your backups. And that's really all it is. It really was something that they used as a backup. And even though the Clinton people told them not to do that because they didn't want backups of it. And we know why, right? So it says here, as we reported, Hillary Clinton took the SIM cards out of three of her phones before she gave them to the FBI, according to FBI documents. So we know that too. And this guy right here, Judge Randolph Moss, ordered the Datto device to be released by September. The case is now in the court of U.S. District Court Judge James E. Bosberg. Here is the information about the case, including the schedule for releasing the information on the devices. Well, it doesn't give much of a schedule, really. When I looked at this document, it really doesn't say much at all. And so, you know, here's basically a history of what they've been trying to do with it. I mean, imagine this. This is 2019, and this complaint was filed back in 2015. This is how long it's taking. And it's just crazy that, that somebody has to fight our government to fulfill the FOIA requests that, you know, they've been asking for. So, you know, they've been updating it here. But when's it going to happen? I don't know. It said September 28th. And it's long past September 28th. So I don't know if that information has been released. It hasn't been released, evidently, to Judicial Watch because they don't have it. Like I said, I looked on their site and I don't believe they have these documents yet. They may have a few of them, but I don't think they have what was on the Datto device. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you. And I know I have people who come to my videos and they just want the facts. You know, they're kind of like the dragnet people. Just the facts, ma'am. <laughs> and I understand that. You know, I totally relate to that. And I also know that there are some people who like to have a little more personal back and forth. So I try to leave some of the personal information at the end. So if you are a content oriented person, you can go ahead and check out because I've already given you the content that I had for this. All the links are down below just like usual. But for those who want a little more personal, I just wanted to tell you that, yeah, I did watch the Democrat debate, the first one last night, and it was, oh, painful almost. But I had no internet at all for, oh gosh, it was from about six o'clock at night 
until noon today. So I had no internet. I couldn't do any research. I couldn't bring up any documents or anything. And even my cell phone, I had the data on my cell phone. I couldn't get my data to work even hardly. I mean, it would, was really running slow and everything was just I think it must have been something in this area. We had a bunch of storms come through, so I don't know if it was related to that or what, but whoo, it was kind of a blackout last night for me. And so, yes, I was forced to watch the Democrats, and oh my goodness, it was like all of these Democrat talking points just repeated over and over and over again. And then you had these softball questions being tossed to him. Essentially, it was like, you just tell us all that you want to say here, except for some people. Some people, they cut off a lot and some people they didn't cut off. Like, I think they were really fond of Pocahontas. But, you know, Elizabeth Warren seemed to be able to get more in there. Uh, Klobuchar got some... Well, she was crying at one point. Yeah, seriously, she had tears on her cheeks. I have no idea why. I didn't catch why she did. Maybe I, it was near the end and I was getting tired. And it's like, I just want this to stop, please. I'm losing brain cells as this goes. Oh, I could just feel it. So I wanted to let you know, that's, you know, one reason why I didn't have a video out this morning, because I had no way to produce a video. So, and it was late enough, by the time that got over with, it was late enough that all the places around here were closed, so I couldn't even go to the library or anything like that. So, uh, like I said, I wanted to let you know that it's just the way life is out here in the sticks, and I guess maybe, you know, it was probably better that way. I went to bed instead, <laughs> but I'm still really tired. I had um, some family commitments yesterday. And that kind of wore me out. So those of you who know I have chronic fatigue syndrome, I'm running a little slow today. And so I hope later on I'm going to take a really long nap. But then there's the next Democrat thing tonight. So I don't know if I'll have a video out tomorrow morning or not. It's at the point where it's it's very tiring, okay? And it really does wear on me when I have a lot of those kinds of energy intensive commitments back to back. And I love my family. Don't get it wrong. You know, I love my family and I love being with them. It's just that it is very draining for me when I am with people. <laughs> so, uh, I sleep a lot. I rest a lot. I'm taking care of myself. I've had this since 2000, so it's not new. I've tried like everything under the sun. So, you know, I get a lot of people saying, oh, try this, try this, this will work. Yeah, okay, I've tried a lot of stuff, folks. <laughs> so not that I don't appreciate you caring for me and you want to make me well again, but it really is at the point now where I'm just tired of trying new things because they don't work and they often cause other problems that I have to deal with then. So yeah, there's there's always some kind of exchange. So I've ha I have some things that... I use if I really need to, but there's always a downside to them too. So I have to be careful how I balance those out. But, you know, I'm living with it. It's survivable and I'm making it through this. Going to be a couple of tough weeks for me coming up next week, the first week of the month. I always have that writer's orientation class. So I'm going to be doing that. And then, of course, you know, it's the 4th of July. Well, I don't really have anything big that I do on the 4th of July and my family's going to be getting together on the 6th instead because my dad's birthday's coming up. He's going to be 91. Yay, dad. And so, you know, I've got that going on. So those are going to really be affecting how I'm going to be putting out videos. I'm going to try my best to keep up with it because I've found in the past that as long as I can keep up with things and keep at them, I can maintain the energy level I need to do that. But when I give things up, I tend to never get them back again because I can never get back to that amount of energy needed. I try to work back up to it and I just can't. So there are many things over the years that I've had to give up just because I no longer have the energy to do it. Like I used to play saxophone and clarinet and guitar and I just can't do them anymore because they take too much energy. And even just sitting down and listening to music for extended period of time or listening to things for extended periods of time really does wear on me. So, you know, I'm not complaining about it. I don't want you to take it that way. But, 
Yeah, it's been a tough time lately because there is so much going on with the news and I'm trying to find things that are not out there in the mainstream, things that maybe you wouldn't have heard of otherwise. And like this, I really thought that questioning by Ron DeSantis was really good, even though it was from 2017. I think we need to hear it again because that needs to come out. I, You know, there's so much out there and I'm trying to keep track of it all. But I tell you what, when you spend a day in bed, then you get behind <laughs> and it gets tough to try to catch back up because there's so much going on. And it's hard to find things that other people aren't talking about. So I've been trying to dig on those and find things that are unusual and different and that you might be interested in. But I just wanted to update you because like I said, I have two different kinds of people. And if you're one of those people that's still listening, then you probably do like to keep up with what's going on with me. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. Chronic fatigue plays a big role in what I can do. And I also have to keep in mind that, yeah, when I don't make a video, I don't make any money either. And it's hard to pay bills unless you make money. So, you know, I'm not doing this for the money necessarily, but I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I have bills to pay and it does take me time and energy to do this. So when I'm doing this, I can't really be doing other things. And so right now I'm enjoying doing this, but I also am getting a little bit of money to help make ends meet. And so it's been tough since I had three videos in this last week that were demonetized. I ended up losing tons and tons of subscribers because I always lose subscribers when they're demonetized. I was at, I think, 50,622, and now I'm down to 50,530 or something like that, maybe 550, I don't know. But it's quite a few that I've lost. And I'm actually, I think, in the last 28 days, I've gained seven subscribers as a net gain because I've lost so many. And every time I do one that's a tough subject that's not monetized, and I know it's not going to be monetized, then I end up losing a big bunch of subscribers. And, you know, I'm not asking for people to have sympathy on me or anything like that. But right now, this is how God's providing me some money to be able to make ends meet. And so I really appreciate those of you who support me. And I'm not begging for money, okay? I'm working on some t-shirts that are going to be coming out really soon. I have a really neat one for the ladies. And um, I just got my sample one in the mail and I really like it. So I think maybe you'll like it too. I worked on my logo. I think some of you noticed that my logo is a little different. I'm still not sure I'm thrilled with it, but I'm I'm going to work on it and see if maybe I can tweak it just a bit more because, well, it seems to be okay for most things, but when it gets really, really small, like when I'm in comments in YouTube, then it doesn't show up very well. So I don't know whether to leave it like that or not. We'll see. Uh, I, if, you've, if you've got feedback on it, I'd be happy to hear that. And and I'm still working on my website and just, uh, you know, the book, the novel. I'm working on a no new scene I had to rewrite for a prequel story that I'm doing because I have my novel series is going to end up being like eight books. Right now, I have six of them pretty much done, but they are but they're really needing heavy edits. And the first one I am working on with an editor and she's also working on this short story that's a prequel and so it will introduce you to a few of my characters it will also introduce you to like the world my books are going to be kind of dealing in so i hope to get that out soon i was really hoping to get it out in april and that didn't happen so <laughs> but yeah we are working on it. i got to get the scene done and when I get that done, I can pass it on to the editor and we can probably get that one done pretty, pretty fast because it is shorter. It's about 6,000 words long. So, um, a long short story, but still a short story. And so that's what I've got going. I, I am trying to get stuff done and you can understand now with the chronic fatigue syndrome, everything goes really slow. I'm kind of like our justice system. I go really, really slow. <laughs> so you know, if those of you who are praying people, pray for me because sometimes I 
wish I had more energy. I always wish I had more energy. Let's, who am I kidding? <laughs> but you know what? With this particular illness, God has taught me a lot of things, and I don't think I could have learned them any other way. So it has, in some ways, been a blessing, but I'll tell you what, wouldn't wish it on anybody else. So uh, it's not a fun illness, and you, when people see you, I can put on, like for a few minutes, like I'm doing right now, put on this, oh, I've got a lot of energy, and then I'll sleep the rest of the afternoon. So that's the part people never see. And so it can be kind of deceptive when people see me, they think that I'm okay and I'm really not. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. And I just wanted to let you know, you know, what was going on. And again, for those of you who are still listening, uh, and I want to say thank you so much for viewing my videos and for supporting me so many ways. You guys are just wonderful and I so appreciate you. I pray for you. I thank you so much for your comments. I thank you so much for just your support of watching my videos. So thanks again. I just had to say that because I want you to know that you're very much appreciated and that you have really changed my life because without this channel and without your support in this channel, I was struggling. I was really struggling financially. I was struggling just to have a reason to do something that day because I felt like I was not accomplishing anything. And at least this way, I feel like I'm, you know, putting out some things that people are interested in. I'm still getting a chance to teach in some ways. And, you know, the bills are being paid, which is a blessing. So again, I want to thank you so much for all of your support emotionally and financially so so that's what i've got for you today i want to thank you for stopping by and i'll see you all later Bye.